folded strata are responsible for creating really spectacular patterns on geological maps. In this video, we're going to explore how we can understand the structure represented by these types of map pattern. We're going to use the Pennsylvania state map at the back there, but we'll also use William Smith's 1815 geological map of England. But we'll start off with some cartoons. So let's build up a rock sequence following the law of superposition, which says that younger rocks are deposited systematically on top of older. In this particular case, we've got a simple stratigraphy, which doesn't vary laterally. It's a so-called layer cake stratigraphy. So while the notion that younger rocks are deposited on top of older is a law, the idea that strata don't vary laterally is an assumption and a simplification for the purposes of our cartoons and actually breaks down in, in a number of cases, but it's going to keep us working today. So let's fold them. Well, we can recognise that there are two parts of this layer system now that are pushed up and forming arches and one in the middle that's dropped down to make a trough. And the terms we give these features are antiform for the upfolds and synforms for the downfolds. But we built this stratigraphy so we know where the older rocks and the younger rocks are. The rocks are the right way up so that they young upwards. So our antiform has older rocks in the core. This means we can give it a different name. We can call it an anticline. And the opposite situation where younger rocks are in the core, we have a syncline. So we have these simple relationships of older in the core makes an anticline, younger in the core makes a syncline. So it's the stratigraphic order of rocks that allows us to use the terms anticline and syncline. It's the inclination or dip of the rocks that tells us whether we're dealing with an antiform or a syn form. And the examples we're going to look at today, anticlines are also antiforms. In other words, they always have older rocks in the core. And the opposite for syn forms and synclines. So let's come away from this simple cross section and think about three dimensions which will take us towards maps. So here's a incised set of folds through here revealing a map pattern, which we can simplify onto a strip map like this. Well, first let's capture the direction of dip of the layers. So these are the orientations of bedding. And you can see that for an antiform, the beds dip away from the core in the direction pointed by those triangles. And for the synform, they point in towards the core of the synform. So that allows us to use these terms. But if we use the stratigraphic order of rocks, we can see that for the anticlines, the rocks are young in the direction of those blue arrows away from the core, and for the synform, they're young towards the core of the fold. And we can put the axes of the folds in with these standard notations. And the critical feature is to note that the sequence of rocks is mirrored about these axes. So as we go out from the antiform on the left, we go from red out to green to yellow to brown symmetrically across that fold axis. We can use these symmetry patterns to identify folds and interpret them on real geological maps. So let's turn to William Smith's 1815 map or part of it for southeast England here. You can recognize the south coast, you can recognize the Thames estuary at the top. And let's look at the green strip, which we can identify on the northern part of the map, which forms the North Downs, and its mirror image on the southern part of the map, the South Downs. We can identify a direction of dip from the Ving in the valleys, and we can also recognize a sequence of rocks that moves out from the middle of this structure in the Weald, out across the chalk, out to younger rocks on the flanks on both sides of the structure. So there's a symmetrical arrangement of rocks away from the central part of this area, from the weald, out to the margins. And the rocks dip away in the direction of arrows. So we can put in our orientations of beds in this sort of fashion in here, inclined away from the middle, and draw in an axis like this, which reveals an antiform. Because the rocks are the right way up, 
there are older rocks in the core, so this is also an anticline. It's called the Wielden anticline. Okay, so that's a pretty simple map pattern. Let's return to our cartoons. And now we have a situation. The axes are not horizontal, but they dive down in one direction in the landscape. So let's think about this on a map. So here's our map strip in here, and you can see rather than our beds forming continuous strips that never come together, our layers arch around backwards and forwards through the map pattern. Let's analyze them again with their dips. This time you'll see that the uh, strike symbols across either of those antiforms in there are not parallel, but they point towards each other. They try and converge, in this case, towards the top of the image. The strikes are not parallel. The younging directions, they still go away from the core of the folds, down the dip directions, as we're showing in here. And we can draw on the fold axes like this. And those big arrows are in the direction that the fold axes plunge or incline down into the subsurface. So this is plunge. So we're going to take this to maps. The key part of recognizing folds on maps is this mirroring effect of the stratigraphic units and the direction of younging that flips across the fold axes and the variations in the dip direction of the strata. So we can move between the map, the plan view, and we can build up profiles, cross sections through these structures. So let's turn our attentions to this wonderful geological map from the Appalachians of the USA and Pennsylvania. And we'll just look at one part of it up here, which is quite close to the city of Williamsport. And let's zoom in to that structure. There we go. So let's analyze this. We can identify that there is a symmetrical arrangement around an axis of symmetry, something like this, where the sequence of rocks, if you move out in the direction of the yellow arrows, is mirrored across the axis of the fold. We can also turn our attention to how the layers behave as they cross valleys. There are no topographic contours on here, but there are some rivers which tell us where the valleys are. We can see them here. And we can see that the boundary between the striped brown unit OBE and the mushroom colored OR V's as it crosses those valleys, implying these dip directions. Let's move around this boundary now. We can see that it's fairly cuspate as we walk around the map. Maybe these cuspate features also represent valleys. They just don't have streams in them that are large enough to be shown at this scale of mapping. So maybe all these places here are valleys, in which case we can infer these orientations of bedding. So we're picking out a fold structure with that axis running through. So it's an antiform. But the geological boundaries close at each end of the fold. So the fold is doubly plunging. The axis dives under the ground at both ends of the structure. So overall that structure would have a sort of whaleback form. And the strata young away from the axis. So it's an antiform that's doubly plunging and it's an anticline because we're moving to younger rocks as we move away from the core of the fold. That fold was up here. And you can see as you move around the rest of this area of Pennsylvania, there's a whole pile of folds that's just ready to be interpreted. So we've got some tools now for recognizing folds and understanding their geometry from their map pattern. So we've looked at antiforms and synforms, and in the examples here, the rocks are the right way up. So the antiforms are also anticlines, the synforms are also synclines. We've looked at tracking the continuity of fold axes in that example we've just looked at in the northern part of the Pennsylvania map. And we've seen that we can identify the plunge direction from the outcrop pattern. So we can move between maps and cross sections and build up from a two dimensional representation, the map, to a three dimensional understanding of the geological structure.